Hey guys, what is good? Welcome back to the Uncle Sharma channel. I know, international break, but don't worry guys, I got you back. Be keeping you up to date with the latest news related to Inter and uh, seeing the latest news regarding the financial fair play that will impact Inter in the future. So without further ado, let's get into it and make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Let's go. First, really important news guys. The new logo is coming and it's coming very soon. It's coming in three days actually as Inter themselves announced on their official social media pages. Tre giorni al lancio del nuovo logo ufficiale. And, uh, you know, we've, it's, been a, it's been a badly kept secret, you know, Inter are rebranding. There's been, uh, you know, images released of the logo. If you haven't seen it on social media, make sure to check it out. And we'll talk about it probably when um, when it's released in three days, you know, with the full marketing campaign. And here is the video, the video that shows all the video, all the logos that Inter have had all over the years. You know, Inter have had a variety of logos over the years. You know, I've seen people panicking about why Inter changing the logo, but it's not a new thing. Inter have been changing logo many times over the years. I think over 12, 13 times Inter have changed their logo in their, in their history. So this is nothing new. Obviously, everyone will have their opinion on, uh, you know, whether they like it or not, but there's not much we can do about it. It's here and it's coming and uh, we'll talk about it properly when, when it's coming, guys. Uh, I'm ready. Are you guys ready? Now, let's move on to the news that I really want to talk about with you guys. And, uh, you know, this is not just affecting into this news. This is, will affect the whole of European football, which is the death of financial fair play. Yes, UEFA have decided to scrap FFP as reported here by Corriere dello Sport and, uh, you know, reported by FC Inter News. Il FFP è morto e non solo per la colpa del virus. So the FFP is dead and it's not only due to the, to the virus. So FFP was launched in uh, the 2010-2011 season, I believe. And it was launched, you know, for UEFA to curb the spending of clubs. You know, there was the spending was getting out of hand with some clubs. Clubs were going bankrupt. The clubs were losing loads of money. It was getting it was getting a real pretty ridiculous to be honest. So, in essence, it was a good idea to bring in, you know, try to curb the the spending, try to, you know, be a bit more responsible with the spending. So the rules were, you weren't allowed to spend more than your revenue. You weren't, you know, allowed to make losses for consecutive years, um, especially more than 20, 30 million. And if you did, you would go into, you know, the settlement agreement as uh, Inter did, as AC Milan did. Um, you know, we, we know we know about those uh, those kind of rules. And even worse, if you were, you know, really, really bad, you'd be getting fines and, you know, possible sanctions and, you know, exclusion from competitions. But in the end, all FFP did was really you know, give incentive or give advantage to the team that were already well in place. You know, English football was on the rise in a big way when FFP came into play. And what FFP really did was make sure that, you know, the EPL kind of just solidified their place in first place and got even, you know, the gap got even bigger with Italy, Spain and France. You know, their, you know, TV right deals were getting better, but not really improving that much. But the English deals were, you know, poof out of this world you know the commercial revenue of english teams kept increasing the salaries and obviously the the, pro, the transfer fees they could offer were, were crazy and and they were all within their revenues whereas you know italian french spanish spanish clubs you know their revenues weren't increasing so their spending remained the same and, it, and it's funny because when sooning when sooning first came into inter they they came in with the, with the ambition to spend money but first of all into at that time when the, the settlement agreement started you know auxilio our sporting director had to make miracles every summer in the transfer window with capital gains selling primavera players for overinflated figures and you know doing some dodgy deals accounting fictitious accounting stuff uh, just just for inter to be able to keep the main players like back then and try to buy players as well and now that we're finally out of that, you know, inter improving their revenues, now the Chinese government is, uh, you know, imposing sanctions and suing themselves and not in the best financial situation. So the timing has been funny for, for suing. So why are you for getting rid of it, uh, the FFP? As we've seen, you know, the COVID virus has had a big impact, you know, the loss of stadium revenue, people not coming to the stadiums. The TV right deals are actually getting worse now, you know. Um, we saw in Italy recently that there's... Sky Sports have managed to not win the next uh, three-year deal for to show the Serie A. The Zone has actually won that deal, 
and they were both haggling it out but you know the money offered in the end for Serie A was not was not great you know you would expect an increased amount but in the end it wasn't it's just you know it seems like there's becoming a little bit of a disconnect with football um, outside of the Premier League whereas the only league that's uh, increasing the the TV right deals <clears throat> UEFA say that the FFP in general uh, improved the, the the health of European football in the 10 years um, in terms of you know debts and reducing the debts around around football which is true which is true but you know as, as it says here thanks to sponsor and TV deals it's the, the English clubs really are the ones that benefited from this whole from this whole um, you know system the distance between the five biggest uh, leagues is getting bigger and you know the ones that have suffered the most are Italian clubs in the end you know Inter, AC, Roma you know these clubs were have been out of Europe for many years but haven't really been able to invest in the way that they really want to um, but also the the, the, the stipendi continuano a incidere troppo so you know this, the wages of players you know we're seeing some of the figures out there are absolutely crazy so, you know, UEFA is trying to curb that. The two new rules that UEFA are going to bring in, so they're going to scrap the whole, you know, you don't need to make a loss. So there probably will be still some sort of cap on how much loss you can make, but it won't be as strict as it is now. And the new rules will be, one will be a cap on commissions for agents, which is good. <laughs> Mino Raiola is sweating, you know, the likes of Jorge Mendes, Mino Raiola, these guys are, are panicking in their seats right now because, you know, a cap for their commissions you know, it's, it's a good thing for football. You know, we're seeing nowadays there's so many free transfers. Players let their contracts expire a lot more because, you know, there's a lot more money for them in terms of wages for the next club or, you know, bargaining chip for them to renew a higher wage. And the demands of ages nowadays are getting ridiculous. You know, we saw Mino Raiola apparently in the Pogba deal made, made upwards of tens of millions of pounds, like absolutely ridiculous type of money. And he's trying to make that now once again with Donnarumma at Milan, whose contract is stalling the contract with Newell. His contract ends this summer. Uh, Chana Loglu as well. He's not a trial agent. But you see all these big players these days, they let their contracts expire, which wasn't so much of a, a thing back in the, back a few day, a few years ago. Now it's, a, it's becoming more of a thing. And then the second rule is relating to a uh, possible introduction of a luxury tax uh, and a salary cap. Um, so going towards more of the NBA type route, where you know there are salary caps uh, for for the NBA and the luxury tax, so that means if an owner wants to invest, you know, more than their revenue, they can, but they would have to pay a tax on that or like a fee on that. So you know, say, okay, I know that I'm going to spend more than I, than I than I'm allowed to, but I'm willing to pay the 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 fine for that, and that fine in theory should would will be distributed to to you know in the UEFA system, whether it's that's you know in the grassroots or as in prize money for, for the Champions League, we don't know, or, you know, bribes or whatever. <laughs> but in concept, that's another good idea because one thing, you know, people always say, like, oh, why can't we get, you know, the Man City owners, the the, the shakes to come in? And we saw Inter be linked with the, the PIF group that was supposed to come in as minority shareholders in Inter recently. But the thing is, guys, that this always, I find it so funny that people just don't realise they can't spend the money like they can't just come in and spend what they want so man city got kind of lucky that their owners came in around is it 2008 2009 so they came in just before the ffp same with psg and they were able to spend freely back then so they consolidated their teams already and you know created massive you know those fifa football manager type teams where they spend whatever they wanted before ffp came in well, you can't do that now. So imagine, let's say those, uh, let's say the Saudi Arabia group came to Inter now. Inter's revenues are around what 550 million, 600 million. I can't remember something like that, or maybe even less. But that's 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 the cap. They can't spend more than that. To spend more than that, they have to make those fictitious sponsorships, like you know, the Man City Etihad deal, which is was the reason why they were supposed to be getting fined and banned. From, uh, from from the competition. Uh, I can't remember if it was exactly the Etihad, but it was one of the sponsorships that Man City had made. Um, but in the end, UEFA had no proof of that. And in the end, the whole thing was scrapped off. Even, even though everyone knew that's a, that's a dodgy-ass sponsorship deal that gives them that more revenue 
uh, to allow them to spend more. And essentially, that was the death of FFP, that deal there with Man City not being able to be sanctioned, not being able to be punished for that. So there's no point of having FFP if those if you're going to allow those things to, to happen. But that's what I'm saying. Even if someone like that comes into Inter now, they're... Unless they make some stupid sponsorship deal, which, you know, would be dodgy as hell. You can't spend more than your revenue, so it doesn't make sense. But now with this luxury tax, it allows for someone like that to come in and say, OK, you do want to spend, but you have to pay a fine. And I'm sure a lot of these, you know, these uh, Saudi guys and, you know, these Arrow guys, they're willing to do uh, these types of things. That's why you see all the, the club, all the... Um, all the funds that we link with you know they're all they're all like investment funds they, these are guys that are looking to make money they're not here for for inter or another club to be there like you know hobby or like you know they're trying to win trophies they're here to try to make money so this overall might be a better better um, system overall especially with the salary caps as well you know if you know the top players are all around the same salary to convince them you, you're convincing them by you know your sporting project rather than convincing them with more money but let's see let's see how how this uh, develops but i think this is a this is a good thing for football and i think it will be a good thing for inter moving forward the shackles are removed for sooning to spend from the chinese government in the future or prospective owners who want to come in uh, to inter to try and you know spend and take inter back to the top of europe moving on transfer market news um this one I just had to cover it because it's uh, relating to one of my favorite players in, in the Serie A for, for a long, long time, which is Luis Muriel. As Gazette dello Sport here reports, l'Inter punta Muriel, servono 25-30 milioni di euro. Conte spinge per il colombiano. Tesoretto da 3 a D. So apparently Conte himself is pushing for Luis Muriel. Um, we know Muriel this season and in the past seasons, you know, he's had a... He's had a, you know, an explosion under Gasperini. Um, you know, this season he's third in the uh, top scorer charts behind Romelu Lukaku and Ronaldo. Um, <laughs> when 18 goals in Serie A and 60% of them came from a substitute. So he is the super sub of Serie A. He's the best super sub in Europe in terms of goal per minute ratio. Absolutely crazy numbers. His contract with the Atalanta is until 2023 1.8 million salary so very you know very affordable but you know then you need at least 25 30 million to uh, convince Atalanta to to part ways with them and that 25 30 million according to Gazzetta who coming from the sales of Jean Mario fingers crossed from Sporting who apparently is doing well out there apparently back in the, his native country Nainggolan and Matias Vecino now Luis Muriel as I said is one of my favorite players at Inter and when I say this you know I know it might sound stupid but if you if you follow Serie A for a long time you know what this means this guy is the closest thing that we've ever seen to R9 to the original Ronaldo and I know that sounds like, you know, uh, blasphemy saying that about Ronaldo. But then I looked back at my tweets, I've seen, I, uh, if you follow me on Twitter, you probably think I'm an Atalanta fan. The amount of, you know, times I uh, I talk about Atalanta and tweet about them, you know, back when he first uh, signed, I knew, I just knew him and Zapata up front for Gasparini were going to kill it, you know, uh, Adriano and uh, Ronaldo there. And it turned out to be true. Uh, you know, I was tweeting about them. I tweet about them so much. Look at that Muriel, Muriel, all these tweets about Muriel. But you see all these memes, you know, in Italy, they really talk about him as, you know, the the Ronaldo regen. And it, it's, it's, it's true. Like, I know it sounds like blasphemy, but this guy, the way he takes on, he's so direct with his play. Um, you know, there's not many strikers in world football who take on the man like he does, like very directly 1v1, an amazing right foot, you know, super sub. Uh, he's so good to watch, so pleasing to the eye as well. Pace, power, free kick ability. But the thing is, I don't see him fitting well at Inter. I don't see him fitting well with Antonio Conte and his system. You know, Antonio Conte demands high pressing, hard work, you know, especially, you know, not just on the field, but also off the field. You have to be in peak physical condition. And the thing with Muriel is over the years, it's happened a few times in his career. Udinese happened and Sampdoria happened where there was claims that he came to pre-season overweight. You can see his body shape in general. He doesn't seem like the guy, you know, he's got a bit of a tubby face. He doesn't seem to be the most, you know, 
a professional guy in Atalanta. There's a reason why he only comes on as a sub is because he doesn't have 90 minutes in his leg to play the way Gasparini wants, you know, the, the high pressing, high energy football. So that's why he was only given those 30, 40 minutes on the pitch whenever most of the time. And, you know, I think Conte and Pintus would destroy him, this, uh, you know, with their, with the training methods. But I would love to see, you know, my heart would love to see Luis Muriel play for Inter. And, you know, obviously imagine having Luis Muriel as a weapon to bring off of the bench. You know, you got Alexis Sanchez where he brings on a bit more creativity. But this guy, you know, even more of a goal threat compared to Lautaro. You know, he's more, you know, he used to have similar issues like Lautaro when he was younger. He was just as wasteful, if, if not more. But he's got even more pace, more 1v1 ability, you know, more, you know, free kick ability. He, he adds so much uh, if you if you bring him on. But as I said, 20, 30 million for a sub Lautaro. I don't know. It, it, it seems like too much. I don't think it seems very realistic. Atalanta not very willingly. I don't think they will willingly let him go. So I don't think it's a very realistic um, target. And I don't think in an Antonio Conte team, I, I don't think he would fit in mentality wise, attitude wise. But yeah, that, that was my that's my thoughts on Muriel. You guys, let me know in the comments below. What do you what do you think of Luis Muriel? I know most people would like him, but I always I always say this thing: you can admire a player, but it doesn't mean that you always have to you know want that player in your team. You know, I'm saying with Ilicic, Ilicic is probably one of my top five favorite players in the, in the Serie A. But I know that if he played for Inter, I'd, I'd hate him just because of how frustrating he is, how inconsistent he is, his attitude at times. But as an outsider, I really appreciate him. You know, Jeremy Boga is another t player like that. Last year, last year he had a great year for Sassuolo. But where where can he fit in? I love to watch him play, but where does he really fit into this team? So you know, there's many players out there. Tony Cruz is my favorite player in world football, but I don't think he would fit into this inter team. So that's the same with Muriel. Like I love him, I, I love him to bits, but I'm not really sure if he would really fit in the system. Moving on, congratulations to Milan Skriniar winning the Slovakian Player of the Year for the second year in a row. Um, but also shouts out to him for acknowledging, you know, he said, Stagione buona, non perfetta, o ripreso il posto all'Inter. You know, he said it was a good season, but not great. And, uh, and I managed to, you know, win back my spot in Inter. And he wasn't really expecting it. He said, he was, I guess he was being very humble there. He thought maybe Kuchka could have won that. Um, and yeah, I think, you know, there's not much competition for him in the next coming years. He could dominate the Slovakian uh, Player of the Year award for the next few years and reach, you know, Hamsik numbers. I think Hamsik, Marek Hamsik won it like six or seven times. He could, he could get to those numbers if he continues like he is now. So congrats to Milan Skrinja. And, you know, he said, you know, he wants the title with Inter now. Voglio il titolo con l'Inter. And hopefully, my bro, you can secure that this summer. And to finish off, wanted to uh, show, you know, what Vidal and Sanchez have been getting up to in this international break. We know the uh, South American break was cancelled, luckily. So these two stayed to work hard, you know, Vidal still recovering from his surgery. And, um, you know, El Nino Maravilla still just keeping fit. And look at these two guys, you know, they're in very, very good shape. You know, so people saying that Vidal is dusted. That does not look like a dusted body to me and Sanchez geez those abs have abs those abs are going out for a walk and for dinner and for lunch then these guys are have their mind, are mind of their own these, these two especially Sanchez are sculpted so it's good to see those two keeping in good shape and I had to just leave a little tweet you know I was like a few of my tweets in the past these two are proven winners man you know look at this from 2006 when they came up to came up with colo colo in chile together the first title together and ever since they've been winning wins on wins on wins you know these are serial winners and hopefully this summer another title added to their bag but yeah guys that was my news report for 27th of march keep a lookout on my channel for more news and today i'm shooting another video with anthony from inter worldwide and an azzurri italy national team special so make sure to check out that one when I release that either today or tomorrow. Make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you support the channel. Comment below your thoughts on the FFP situation. What do you make of it? Salary caps, luxury tax. Was the FFP a farce? Luis Muriel, what's your thoughts on that? Screenia, Arturo Vidal, Sanchez. Yeah, guys, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you for the next one. And as always, Forza Inter.